belonging is a basic human need. Any rejection we experience tends to create a normal sense of discomfort. When rejection triggers a deeper feeling of pain, it may come from a belief that we are worthless or unlovable. We may also feel an emotional intensity that is greater than the situation calls for. But even in the midst of an intense reaction, we can learn how to handle rejection and find our way back to emotional balance. Hi, welcome to Your Great Journey. Each week we offer you brief tips, techniques, and insights to help you move in positive directions and master big change. For more information, please visit yourgreatjourney.com. Your Great Journey is brought to you by audiobook publisher Wetware Media. Wetware Media publishes a wide variety of personal transformation audiobooks available from any major online audiobook retailer. For more information, please visit wetwaremedia.com. That's W E T W A R E M E D I A.com. Today, we're sharing an excerpt from the audiobook Stop Overreacting Effective Strategies for Calming Your Emotions, written by marriage and family therapist Judith Siegel. Stop Overreacting helps you identify your emotional triggers and discover a new way of processing impulsive thoughts and feelings. You'll learn how your emotions can undermine your ability to think rationally in times of crisis and stress. You'll also learn how to neutralize overwhelming emotions and choose healthy responses instead of losing control. In this episode, Judith Siegel offers a series of questions that will help you gain a better perspective and learn how to handle rejection. She also offers two exercises to help you learn more about the experience and what you really want in life. Tolerating Rejection The emotional memories that are activated when we are rejected often go back to experiences in middle school and adolescence. When we were children, we allowed group dynamics to inform our ranking and social order. Being excluded meant that we didn't fit in with the kids with whom we wanted to associate. As adults, we can try to acknowledge that not everyone gets along and that there are often reasons behind a rejection that we may never know. People can decide to end a relationship or choose to hire another person, but that decision should not determine our self-worth. Perhaps we believed that when we were young, but as we mature, we can choose to not give other people the power to decide whether or not we are good enough. As adults, we have a clearer sense of our real strengths and are no longer dependent on other people to shape our identity. Processing the Feeling of Rejection Belonging is a basic human need. Any rejection will create a sense of discomfort and pain, but that can be a momentary response. The deeper pain that rejection can stimulate comes from a belief that we are worthless or unlovable. Remember, the amygdala can make us experience emotional intensity that may be greater than the situation calls for. As we begin to connect our thoughts and feelings, the pain will subside. Consider these questions. Does this rejection really mean that you have nothing of value to offer? Do you know all the circumstances behind the decision of the person who rejected you? Are you flooding with emotional memories of other times you have lost something important? Is the feeling of being powerless to change this adding to your pain? Reestablishing Perspective Once we get past the emotional sting of being rejected, we can find ways to think about the real loss. The first thing is to reestablish your perspective. Consider these questions. Have you idealized the person or the gain that you were pursuing? Has this one incident made you believe that you will never get what you yearn for? Can you become more certain about what you truly want going forward? Can you imagine things you can do to make this dream come true? Thoughtful Responses In a thoughtful reaction, we are able to acknowledge the pain that comes with rejection. Loss is never easy, and it is important to be able to understand that something of value has been taken away. However, understanding the true value of the loss is crucial. 
In responding thoughtfully, we can ask ourselves if we have idealized the person, job, or opportunity, and whether we now have the impulse to devalue it as a way of protecting ourselves from feeling more pain. We can also scan for emotional memories that are probably adding to the emotional experience. In the middle of an intense reaction, we need to focus on finding our way back to emotional equilibrium. But when we are calm again, there are important things to reflect on. Once we are certain that the old issues of self-esteem or shame that are related to childhood experiences have been diffused, we can more honestly think about the lesson this rejection can teach us. If compatibility was an issue, did you have clues that were ignored along the way? How can this lack of compatibility sharpen your understanding of what you really want and what the other person in this situation was truly looking for? Are there things you should be changing if you want to pursue that kind of opportunity again? Is there any feedback that can be helpful as you decide the best way to move forward? When we stop seeing rejection as an affirmation of worthlessness and start looking at the compatibility that is needed to make relationships with people or organizations flourish, we can learn much about what we really want in life. We also learn that, in many ways, we don't have the level of control that we wish we did, another important trigger that needs to be considered. End of chapter exercises Most people think that it is best to forget about incidents from the past that have created pain. However, if we allow these experiences to inform our self-image, then it is better to revisit these feelings than to try to forget them. The purpose of examining painful memories is to bring your adult perspective to situations that your childhood self had no way of challenging. If you find that the process is too uncomfortable, Just jot down your thoughts and feelings in your notebook or journal and move on to the rest of this audiobook. After you have learned about the different ways to recover from extreme emotions in Chapter 12, you can always return to this exercise and try again. Exercise 1. Undo Childhood Shame Try to remember a time when you were a school-aged child and were excluded. There might have been a party that you weren't invited to a team that you weren't chosen for, or a group that made it clear you weren't welcome to eat lunch at their table. Do you recall what was said or done to you that made you feel rejected? Now bring your adult self to that situation. Try to imagine what weakness or insecurity led those children to be so cruel to you. Was it common for that group of children to exclude others? Do you think any of those children may have experienced their own hidden doubts and insecurities? We all have some parts of ourselves that we are uncertain about. By excluding others, children are trying to reassure themselves about their own self-doubts. Dominating others and establishing a pecking order may also have played a role in their acts of rejection. Children also tend to make judgments based on differences in appearance, cultural background, or athletic skill. Can you identify one thing about you that was different from the other children? Now bring your adult self to that issue. Is it possible that something that once caused you to feel vulnerable when you were young ended up adding something unique and important to your life? When we look at the differences that were the source of the childhood shame from an adult perspective, we can often write a new script. Remember the story of the ugly duckling? Difference is not necessarily bad, even though it is an important aspect of why children reject one another. Think about other people you have discovered in your adult life who share and enjoy those things that made you different from other children. By embracing those parts of yourself, you are undoing emotional memories that have the power to make you re-experience unwarranted shame. Exercise 2 Challenge Splitting Taking the risk of wanting to be loved or chosen automatically raises the question, am I good enough? Too often, we idealize a person or project and thereby give others too much power over determining our self-worth. Devaluing someone who has rejected you is not the answer and is just another signal that you are splitting. Think of a recent incident where you were rejected. Then explore the following questions in your notebook or journal. 
Name three things that made this job or person attractive to you. What wonderful things did you dream might happen if this had worked out? Name three things that you weren't comfortable about. If these concerns or problems had gotten worse, what might have happened? Remember, no one is perfect, but sometimes we want something so badly that we tune out or ignore the downside. If you had difficulty thinking of three things that were wonderful about that person or job, maybe that person or job isn't wonderful enough to warrant the intensity of your pain over the loss. But if you had difficulty coming up with three things that you weren't comfortable with, you are most likely idealizing the situation. Most things in life have pros and cons. When we see things as all good or all bad, we know that splitting has taken over. Thanks for listening to this excerpt from the audiobook, Stop Overreacting, Effective Strategies for Calming Your Emotions. You can purchase the complete audiobook from any major online audiobook retailer. If you'd like more information, please visit yourgreatjourney.com. Please be sure to subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode. And if you like the show, please rate and review it. And please, share it with friends who might also enjoy the show. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week. Your Great Journey is brought to you by audiobook publisher Wetware Media. Wetware Media publishes a wide variety of personal transformation audiobooks available from any major online audiobook retailer. For more information, please visit wetwaremedia.com. That's W-E-T-W-A-R-E-M-E-D-I-A dot com.